all. My name is Cindela Trent. I've lived in the Nicola Valley now for 23 years. And we came here from Haida Gwaii. Um, it was probably there that I really started doing art as a, as a way of my life. I went to art school in the 70s, Kootenai School of Art in uh, Nelson. Uh, got a fine arts degree there. And what I do is hand-built clay dishes and cups, vessels, I guess, and a lot of quilting. And recently I've started doing some upcycled art, taking old clothing and fabric and repurposing it into new useful garments and items. And what I'm doing here got some clay. I'm going to roll it through this machine which is called a slab roller and flatten it out as much as I can beforehand. And this thing is an even pressure so that the clay will be one thickness all the way across and I can adjust it here. It takes a few times back and forth to get it the thickness that I want. Check it. That's not bad. I think I'll use that. So I like to have the background quite smooth, so I'm going to use a rolling pin, possibly this metal rib smooth the surface and I take these old doilies that people must have spent hours making. People don't use them for decoration much anymore and I find them at thrift stores and garage sales and people give them to me and that's how I make the texture on the clay, smooth off any rough edges. And I'm going to cut a circle. And this is a, a white clay, it's actually a porcelain. And it fires really lovely in white. And then I've made these plaster molds out of the sh dishes that I like, bowls that I like the shape of. I use this so that I don't get too many finger marks. So now this will sit overnight on this plaster mold. And the next step would be tomorrow morning. I'll take it off the mold. I'll smooth the edges with a sponge and some water. Just so that it's, I like it to feel good in your hands. I want people to want to touch it. Because it's not just a visual thing. There's a little lump here that I don't like. That dries a little bit more. And these are underglaze decals. And they're silk screened onto this rice paper using oxides, uh, iron oxide probably for the black ones. And I purchased them by the sheet. And there's lots and lots of different designs out there available. Flowers, animals mandalas, plants, all kinds of things. I prefer the wildlife ones because that's sort of what my life is about, being outdoors. Dampen this. Lay that in there. Just press it with a wet sponge. And I'm gonna peel this off. So that dries and it gets bisque fired at about 1800 
16 degrees Fahrenheit. Then when it comes out of the bisque kiln, it gets glazed and refired at about 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. And I add, sometimes add these little borders because I think it finishes it off nicely. And that's just a black underglaze that I use with a sponge or with a brush to make just a little added decoration around the edge. They've been really popular at the gallery shop. So these are some upcycled bags that are in the process. And this one is a lot of wool shirts, uh, suit jackets, men's suit jackets. Um, again, the old uh, doilies and lace from when people used to do that craft. Here's one that's finished. And this one is black velvet that someone just gave me. People give me a lot of stuff when they find out what I do. This lace is gonna have to be hand sewn on. And I use my sewing machine and my serger to put things together depending on what the fabric is. Wool often frays a lot easier than some other fabrics, so I tend to use the serger on the raw edges. I've had um, several shows here in Merritt, um, a couple solo shows and a few joint shows with other people at the gallery, the Nicola Valley Art Gallery. Several shows when I lived on Haida Gwaii at several different locations. Um, when I was there, I lived extremely isolated. We lived at um, Moresby, near Moresby Camp at a fish hatchery. My husband was the manager of the fish hatchery. And uh, so I had to find something to do with my time. There was no job for me at the hatchery and it was an hour to town over logging roads that were being used by logging trucks. So I started quilting and printing t-shirts and doing clay work and making jewelry and then there was a lot of gift shops on Haida Gwaii um, in every little town had their own little gift shop so I just approached them and ended up with my work in half a dozen, half a dozen different places on Haida Gwaii. I did geotaku fish printing which is um, a process where you take the actual fish, cover it with ink or paint, and lay fabric on top of it, smooth it all around, and when you peel the fabric off or the t-shirt, the fish is imprinted on that t-shirt. And that was really fun too because you got to go out and collect bits and pieces from the forest and on the beach to make those things. So you know, We were there for 15 years before we came here. and. Uh, when I moved here, I looked around and found Creative Company at first, and um, I joined them for a few years. So in art school, I studied uh, weaving, spinning, dyeing of wool. Uh, clay was my major, so we did both hand building and wheel work. I preferred the hand building. Um, yeah, we had to, we, we had to learn every different medium, painting, um, watercolors, acrylics, printmaking, several different methods of printmaking, and then choose what we wanted to major in by the last year that, that I was there. I've always been interested in the outdoors and animals, wildlife, and if I hadn't been doing art, I probably would have gone into something like marine biology. So that's where a lot of the inspiration comes from is, um, out, outdoors, the creatures that live out there, and especially the ocean. Um, kind of landlocked here, but um, I still get to visit the ocean once in a while. Um, and my parents were both creative. My mother painted. My dad's a furniture maker. So I was always surrounded by creativity right from day one. And they encouraged all their children to pursue what it was they loved. They didn't try to push us in any direction. And so when I said I wanted to go to art school, they said, that's good, go. And as for choosing the clay, I guess I like, I want to be able to touch a piece of art. So I prefer a three-dimensional thing to a two-dimensional thing. I appreciate and love painting, but I really connect it with the clay. You touch it and you mold it and it can grow under your hands and people can pick it up and turn it over and feel it and feel the heft of it and stuff. 
So that appeals to me more than something that's two-dimensional. I'm not good at the merchandising and selling of the stuff. I'm really happy that the gallery is there and will do that on my behalf. But if you can be both, that you're, you're golden. If you can make your own work and market it successfully, then that's just a huge plus. So I'm very thankful for, for the Arts Council taking that, that on for me.